everyone. Thank you for attending this workshop. My name is Susanna and today we're talking about mapping features and possibilities inside Reality Capture. Uh, today's workshop will be divided into two main parts. The first part uh, will be dedicated to georeferencing the scene inside Reality Capture and the options that you have. And the second part will be dedicating to the mapping features inside Reality Capture and uh, how to create a properly georeferenced map and how to display it inside Reality Capture. I will show you the live demonstration directly in the application. Uh, first of all, uh, recently we have implemented a new tool called Map Wizard, uh, which is a simple guide through the whole process uh, of creating georeferenced map. Uh, it is the first button uh, in, the, in the workflow tab and uh, it serves as a, as a guide for very simple creation of a georeferenced map. Once you click the Map Wizard button, the first dialog shows up. In the first dialog, the application asks you to, to load the images. Uh, once you select your images, those are automatically loaded and in the first dialog, dialog you can see how many of your inputs are actually georeferenced. Uh, in order to properly use Map Wizard, uh, your data needs to be georeferenced. Uh, we can see that all of our images uh, are georeferenced and the GPS um, metadata, the GPS coordinates were loaded from the EXIF metadata. Uh, when using uh, drone captured images, uh, we always recommend to keep this group calibration with respect to EXIF uh, set to ON because uh, it might help to properly align the images and also in some cases when some errors uh, accumulate uh, along one line or uh, on the edges of your area, this may prevent to creating so-called banana effect or the curvature of the surface that should be flat. Once we have our, all the inputs uh, loaded, we can proceed to the next uh, step. Uh, the second dialog is optional. Uh, once you have your images georeferenced with the GPS position, you don't have to add any ground control points or flood log data, but if you have some, uh, you can add them uh, in this step and you will be able to see the statistics of the loaded data. As you can see, the coordinate system of the scene is set to WGS84, which was loaded from the metadata of the, of the images. You can change it any time. The next step is, the, is uh, bounding the area of interest. Uh, you can do it via this widget. Uh, it's the same widget uh, as you can see when you place a reconstruction region inside the application. Uh, in some cases, uh, it happens that you have images also from on the edges where you actually don't want to do the reconstruction, so you can bound the area to the smaller area only on the area of interest, and uh, this way the you can make the computation even faster. Uh, you can resize the region, uh, you can rotate it, and uh, with this orange uh, square you can define the upper left uh, corner of the, of the created map. Uh, once we have our region set, we can proceed to the next step, uh, where we define our goal. The goal uh, is to create either the georeferenced map or only the model or create several of them. Uh, for today, we will choose to create a georeferenced map. Uh, in the next step, uh, the application asks you to set the parameters of, of the map that should be created. You can choose between two approaches, either quality-based, when the application calculates the optimal resolution based on the input images and you can select either 100% or 50% of the optimal resolution or enter the value yourself. Uh, or you can choose the distance based when you di uh, directly place the resolution of the map you know, in centimeters per pixel. You can uh, again choose from several 
predefined options or you can place uh, your own value, for example, 10 centimeters per pixel. Once you place uh, the value, the application calculates the estimation of the resolution based on the input data. Once we set the resolution of our map, uh, we can proceed to the summary. Uh, in this step, you can uh, show the execution list where the application tells you all the steps that will be executed during the processing and during the created of the georeferenced map. So we can control it as well if you want. As you can see, the first step is alignment, then creating a model and simplifying it to, uh, to some percentage of the original value. Also the texturing model, because in reality capture maps are created from the, from the textured model and also the parameters of the final auto projection, which means the final map. Uh, you can also add exports uh, if you want to directly export your results after the computation finishes. Uh, if you do not add any exports, the application after it finishes it, uh, say the, the results will be saved uh, only in the project and you can then export them later. Uh, once everything is set, we can proceed to the actual calculation. Once you press go, uh, you can see the final finish estimation of your calculation. You can see the actual process that is currently calculated and also the processes uh, that are waiting for, uh, for processing. Uh, for the sake of time, we will abort this calculation and I will jump directly to the project that was uh, created um, before. This is the project created on this laptop. Uh, as you can see, after the alignment a component was created, 272 images were aligned together. Uh, Two models were created, one uh, in the normal detail and the simplified model, which was textured and also the final orthographic projection and the final map uh, was created based on the parameters we have set before. When you select the component uh, in the alignment report, you can see what time uh, it takes to create the alignment. On a single laptop for almost 300 images, it's 80 minutes. This means that you can take your laptop directly on site, capture the images, load them into the application, uh, make a coffee and wait for the alignment and check if all the images were aligned together. Uh, if not, if there are any gaps, you can get back to the, uh, to the area and capture more images, then load them again to the application directly on site and check if everything is correctly captured and then you can take your data to the office and uh, reconstruct everything uh, as you need but uh, you will prevent the situations when you need to get back to the site for example in a one or three day because the data were not captured properly and this is the problem because it takes time it takes money and also the conditions might not be the same so this way you prevent uh, such situations the next part uh, that I would like to show you is uh, georeferencing your scene when you have also ground control points measured. Uh, in this data set, only the Pro GPS coordinates from the exit data were used. You can display them also on map uh, to check them if they are properly captured. But once you have not so precise GPS coordinates, but also very precise ground control points measured, uh, the GPS coordinates might actually help you to uh, assign the images to the ground control points and to measure the ground control points on the images very fast. I will show you on uh, another set of uh, data. Uh, we have a project that was uh, previously uh, georeferenced only with the, with the ground control points. It's the, it's the different area. We can see that uh, three images were not aligned together, which is not a problem. Uh, but uh, we have also ground control points measured for this area. 
and we want to have our scene precisely georeferenced with these ground control points. It might be very time consuming to manually run through almost 300 images and assign manually each ground control point on each image, but this can be done very fast uh, inside uh, reality capture. When you display your model in 3D view, uh, these orange lines uh, coming from the cameras are actually the residuals between the prior and the calculated camera positions. As you can see, for some uh, images there are large residuals. Uh, when you, we want to use ground control points, you need to uh, either manually create those points and assign the coordinates or load them from a text file. You simply click in the workflow tab to import ground control. Find the file where you have your ground control points stored. For me it's this file. We can check that file also in the text editor. It's just a, a point number and uh, its coordinates uh, in some coordinate system. Uh, we have a coordinate system, some projected coordinate system in Sweden. As you can see, you can combine also WGS84 coordinate system for the GPS pairs and also different coordinate system for your ground control points. It doesn't matter in reality capture. The conversion and transformation between coordinate system is done automatically. Once we select the file that we want to load, we need to choose proper format of the coordinates. Uh, in our case, it's tab separated by X altitude and also proper coordinate system. When you install Reality Capture, EPSG uh, database uh, with coordinates systems uh, is automatically installed, so you can select only by uh, number, EPSG number, or by uh, coordinate system name. You can also import your own database or create your own coordinate systems. Once everything is set, we press OK. And uh, in the 1DS view, we can see that the coordinates of the ground control points were uh, loaded. Uh, you can see that it's georeferenced. It means that the coordinates were assigned. Uh, we can check if we chose uh, correct uh, format of the coordinates or coordinate system in the map view because uh, even if the no images uh, are assigned to the ground control points, uh, points are displayed in the map view and you can see that the position of the cameras and the ground control points uh, is correct so we have loaded everything correctly then we can proceed. Uh, since we used uh, GPS priors to have some rough georeferencing of our scene, Reality, Reality Capture actually uh, has the information about the real position of our data. Therefore, it's very simple to uh, guess the position and the cameras uh, that see the ground control points. Uh, in Reality Capture, we have a tool of measurement suggestions, uh, which means that reality capture suggests the images uh, on which the specific point uh, might be visible. Uh, therefore, all you need to do is select all, all the points and click suggest measurements. As you can see in second, uh, 139 uh, measurements were created for the ground control point. Uh, you can see them in the 1DS view. Uh, currently, those are uh, gray because uh, it's only suggestion. You need to confirm it. Once you select one suggestion and display it in the blue, blue window, blue to the window, you can see the image and the position of the uh, of the ground control points on the image. Uh, since the georeferencing from the GPS priors were not, was not so precise, uh, uh, it, the position, the suggested position is not so precise as well, but all we need to do is simply click on the, on the ground control point in the 2D view. The image is automatically zoomed in. You just need to find the proper position of the point and do not release the left mouse button, but simply press down arrow key when you wish to confirm the measurement. As you can see in the 1DS view uh, in the left side of the, of the application, the first measurement uh, was confirmed and 
the application automatically jumps to the next image. I still hold the left mouse button and move the cursor to the correct position for the next measurement and again I press down arrow key and the application jumps to another image. This way you just need to confirm the measurements, it's very fast, you can zoom in, zoom out as you wish. Uh, if you release the left mouse button or release the image and the position is not correct, you can simply adjust it again or you can uh, delete the measurement if you are not satisfied with the measurement and then continue with measuring ground control points uh, again. When you do this for all ground control points, uh, when you confirm all the measurements, uh, you, you need to then uh, align the scene again to uh, georeference it precisely. But uh, I would definitely recommend to disable the GPS priors. Why is that? Uh, because the GPS positions are often in meters precision and the ground control points are often in centimeters precision. Uh, if you do not disable GPS priors in the next alignment, both uh, GPS priors and ground control points coordinates uh, will be used uh, in the georeferencing process and the GPS priors might actually lower the precision of the final georeferencing and that is what we do not want to. Therefore, we go to the alignment settings, uh, to the camera priors and disable the camera priors. So the GPS pairs will not be used and only uh, ground control points will be used for georeferencing. GPS pairs done their job, they helped us to precise, to fast, to measure the ground control points uh, very fast and precisely. And now we can disable them and use only the ground control points uh, positions. Again, I will not uh, do the measurements for all points, but I will open the project with uh, already assigned uh, ground control points. And as you can see now, the this is the project with uh, the reconstructed mesh, but as you can see, the errors on the ground control points uh, are about centimeters or two centimeters, so it's uh, with higher precision than when using GPS priors. It might sometimes happen that you don't have GPS priors and you have only ground control points measured. Uh, now I will show you uh, how to measure ground control points even if you do not have any raw estimation of the georeferencing and also use the measurement suggestions inside reality capture even though we do not have any georeferenced component uh, before placing the measurements. The, what you need to do is to align the images <coughs> without any georeferencing, because once you have uh, camera positions calculated, once you have some 3D output, uh, the application actually can give you some, some suggestions or some measurement suggestions. We have the images, we have the component that is not georeferenced, and now we want to place ground control points. So we again need to load them into the scene. We can again display them uh, in the map view, we can check the position. Uh, as we can see now, we don't have any cameras displayed in the map view because our cameras currently do not have any geographic position in any real world position, so nothing to display now. Uh, first of all, we will show more views uh, inside reality capture. Uh, I prefer to have the right view to map view so that I can see on the satellite map the, the, the real terrain and the, the real surface. Uh, it might be very helpful because once I open the, the component uh, in the 3D view, uh, I can uh, roughly estimate the rotation 
and I can roughly check the position of the ground control points and I can see that in the 3D view the first point is here, the second point is here, so it might be very helpful to display the ground control points based on the real terrain on the real map. And I will also switch one view to 2D view. Once the control points are loaded, uh, I will select the first point. I can see that uh, it's somewhere here, so uh, in the map it's no, in the 3D view it's somewhere here and I will uh, enable placing control point. Uh, once you start placing control points uh, in the 3D view, as you can see, uh, the preview of the images uh, is shown uh, in, the, in the 2D view, uh, if the 2D view is uh, enabled and also the relation lines or the connections between the point uh, in the, in the sparse point cloud and the cameras that actually see that point. So I can move uh, around in 3D view and check the 2D view to roughly place the first point. As you can see the suggestions uh, were created and all I need to do now is to switch one 2D view to blue and check the position uh, of the point and again confirm it. Uh, once you click on the point, press uh, locate the correct position, press the down arrow key and jump to the next image. And this way uh, locate the point very fast. Uh, you, don't be, you don't have to do this uh, actually for uh, all 11 ground control points because once you place at least three or four ground control points in your scene you can update your scene and then we get back to the point as we were before when we roughly estimate the georeferencing for our scene and then we can use again the suggest measurements. So all we need to do now is place uh, at least three control points. Uh, for example we will choose the third one and then to update the scene. So again, I just need to confirm the suggestions. Zoom in. If you see some uh, yellow triangle, it means that uh, the reprojection error for this measurement is higher than two pixels. Uh, it depends on you if you want to delete this measurement and add a new one or if you want to preserve it, uh, it's just a warning. And then we will choose for example the 10, the point number 10 and place the point number 10 uh, in our scene. It's somewhere here, yes, there it is. Again, confirm the suggestions. And now what we do is to update the scene to have some rough uh, estimation of the, of the georeferencing. Once we updated the scene, uh, you can see that the component became georeferenced. We have also some errors on the placed control points. And now what we need to do is again select all ground control points and suggest the measurements for all other points. As you can see again 100 measurements uh, were created and for, or for all other points we do not have to locate them manually. We just need to confirm the position uh, of, the, of the ground control point and then again align uh, the, the scene so that the georeferencing is as precise as it can be. So it means that uh, even if you don't have uh, GPS prior positions, uh, you simply need to place three ground control points manually, then update the scene and use suggest measurements tool to actually place all other ground control points roughly in the scene and then just adjust the position uh, of the ground control points and align again. This way you can place hundreds of measurements for, for example, 11 control points in minutes and georeference the scene very fast.
Okay, so once we have our scene properly georeferenced with one of the options, uh, we can proceed to actually create a georeferenced map. Uh, in order to create a map or orthographic projection uh, in a reality capture, you need to have uh, your model calculated. For a save of time, I will again jump to the, to the project where the model is actually calculated. As you can see, we have bounded the area only to the, to the center area of our model and in the model in normal detail uh, was calculated. As you can see, it's been, it took 20 minutes uh, to calculate and texture the model. So basically you can do it uh, during the lunch on site and uh, process everything on site on your laptop uh, without the need of internet connection. Uh, once we have uh, our model also textured, we can create a georeferenced map. In reality capture, it's called orthographic projection. Uh, you can find it in the reconstruction tab uh, in the section tools. Once you click it, uh, you can see that the tool uh, is displayed in the 1DS view, the auto projection tool, and also the widget for placing the region for, of the map uh, is displayed in 3D view. The, again, the orange square defines the upper left corner of the orthographic projection. You, you can de define which area you wish to project. Uh, you can also define uh, if you want to create directly the map in GPS, therefore WGS84 coordinate system, or if you want to create some site, projections, then the area is automatically placed on the side of your model or if you want to create top, uh, top map or top orthographic projection. You can define the coordinate system in which you want to create your map. It can be different than the project coordinate system or than the coordinate system of your ground control points. As I mentioned previously, you can combine them uh, automatically inside reality capture. So we choose, for example, WGS84 coordinate system. Uh, we can also manually define the position and rotation of the region or use the widget. And then all we need to do is to create the, to, to set the resolution of the orthographic projection. This is the value in meters per pixel. Therefore, if we want, for example, 10 centimeters per pixel, we need to set 0.1. Uh, value and create uh, the orthographic or create the map uh, with the resolution 10 centimeters per pixel. We can either add it to batch and define all other pro orthographic projections and render them at once or render the projection directly. Uh, it takes uh, several seconds to create um, the orthographic projection with, res with this resolution. The higher the resolution, the higher the computation time. Once the orthographic projection is calculated, it is automatically displayed in 2D view and also it is uh, added into the project tree under the specific component. Uh, you can see that the orthographic projection is georeferenced. Once you select it, uh, you can see its uh, parameters. Uh, you can see the coordinate system and for each orthographic projection in reality capture, the volume and the area is automatically calculated. Uh, you can see that there is cut and fill volume. Uh, cut volume, it's the actual volume between the surface and the bottom area and the fill volume is the opposite between the visible surface and the upper barrier, uh, upper side of the reconstruction region. And also you can see the calculated area in 2D, it means the projected surface uh, onto the bottom side or the area in 3D, so the area of the actual surface uh, that can be seen on the orthographic projection. Once you hover the mouse uh, in 2D view, uh, you can see the coordinates in always in GPS coordinate system and also in the coordinate system uh, of the orthographic projection. Uh, in this case, uh, those match because we have created orthographic projection in GPS coordinate system. Uh, once you uh, enable map view, 
you can also drag and drop orthographic projection into the map view and see it directly in the map by, uh, with the combination of the ground control points and also uh, with the cameras. Uh, in some cases, you might uh, want to create the projection only for the specific area. Uh, you can also create orthographic projection of the selection inside Reality Capture. All you need to do is to uh, enable the lasso tool. Uh, with the lasso tool, you can select the area of interest. So you select the triangles that you wish to project uh, on the orthographic projection. You do not have to place or rescale the region manually. All you need to do is in the reconstruction tab, set reconstruction region, choose set reconstruction region automatically, and the apl application automatically fits the region uh, into the selected area. Then again, we need to enable auto projection tool and choose the coordinate system. We can choose another one for this example. For example, the projected coordinate system in which the ground control points are located and then simply uh, change the resolution, for example, 10 centimeters per pixel again and render the orthographic projection. The application warns you that you are trying to create the projection only from the selection. Then we can press OK because that's what we want to do. And uh, Again, the orthographic projection uh, is automatically displayed. As you can see, those areas that were not selected are not projected uh, in, the, in the map. Even if we have several orthographic projections, we can again display them uh, in the map view. Uh, when you select the map view context menu, you can remove all the, all the images. You can bring them back and send or bring them send them to back or bring them forward uh, it depends on you so you can analyze your data directly in the reality capture uh, once you uh, render the orthographic projection uh, the image layer and also the depth and altitude layer is automatically calculated and then you can choose if you wish to export the image layer which you export the orthographic projection <coughs> or you wish to export the altitude or depth layer, which you actually export a digital surface model. You can see also the scale of the altitude or the depth layer directly inside uh, the application. Uh, recently, we have also introduced uh, MAP reports, uh, which is the tool for uh, displaying and sharing your work with your colleagues or with your customers outside Reality Capture. Uh, all you need to do is select all the projection that you wish to include into the report and in the workflow tab uh, section reports, choose to export map view report. <coughs> As you can see, it's only HTM file, which means that you can display it in uh, your web browser. And once you save it, uh, it is uh, automatically displayed uh, in your web browser with all the orthographic projections. Uh, I will show you the data that were actually stored. Uh, it's on my desktop. So it's the HTM file and the respective folder, uh, which contains uh, the, the maps, the projections and all other images needed to display the, the report correctly. So basically you just need to select those files and share them with your colleagues. In the future we will also introduce uh, storing map reports on the cloud. Then you, all you need to do is simply share the link with your colleagues. As you can see, you can choose between um, terrain or satellite map and uh, all your maps are displayed there. Uh, the leftmost menu is similar to the menu in the reality capture. You can see all the images here. You can also display them in your map. You can see all the ground control points used and also the errors on the ground control points. So you can demonstrate the precision of the actual ge georeferencing uh, of your project. And you can see also all the auto projections created. Uh, once you unfold the auto projection, you can see 
uh, also altitude and uh, image layer. You can display them as you want. And once you select the altitude layer, you can also set the opacity uh, of the layer and also the scale for the image layer. You can also change the opacity. Uh, in the map report, you, you can also create annotations and measure uh, distances and uh, areas as, as well. Uh, it's in the right part of the view. For example, when you choose measure distance, simply uh, place one point and uh, with double click you end the line and you can see the actual uh, length of the line or you can create another one and uh, create a polygonal line where you can see uh, the length of all sides of the line. You can also create uh, area measurements with, bounded with the polygonal line and uh, you will close the area with double click and you can see that also the length of the, of the edges uh, is calculated and also the overall area uh, of, the, of the selected uh, part of your map. As you can see, Reality Capture offers many mapping features and uh, is a fully featured mapping tool that can be used and uh, most important, it can be used directly in the field for the verification of the data so that you will save your time and save your money and you don't have to get back to the site uh, anymore because of the incorrectly captured data because you can check it directly in the field. Thank you very much for your attention. That's all for today. Uh, for more information, please uh, check uh, the, all other tutorials on our YouTube channel or on our website. Have a good day.